All right, welcome back everybody. Today is the day you're going to learn how to play Peace of Mind by Boston off their epic debut album. And uh, I'm going to show you, especially with this song, if you're, even if you're the only guitar player in your band, uh, with one simple tool that you can add to your pedal toolbox, you can completely nail this Boston sound and sound super full and harmonized and everything. And we're going to talk through all those parts and what that pedal is that you need to do that. Hey, if you like this kind of thing and you haven't done so already, please jump down right now, click subscribe, ring the bell. The bell lets you know every time I drop new content, which I do every week. All my videos have chapters in them, so it, you can jump right to the part of the lesson that you want to see and bypass anything you don't. And also, if you're looking for other ways to support the channel, I appreciate that. There's the thanks, that button right below. It's just like throwing a tip in the tip jar. Or you can join my Patreon page where I've got chord charts and tabs for all the songs that I do on YouTube like this one. All the links are in the description. Check it out. Okay, so Boston Peace of Mind. This is just such a great piece of epic classic rock guitardom. And um, always um, fun to play, fun to learn the parts, but it always sort of leaves you lacking um, because you're just one guitar playing one part and there's so many layered stuff and harmonies that Tom Schultz does with all the Boston stuff, as you know. Within the last year or so, I found the pedal that's kind of like my Boston in a box and I wanted to show you that and talk a little bit about it and um, show you how you can use it on this song as we go through all the different parts. The pedal I'm talking about is called the Boss Harmonist PS6. Um, I'm going to have a link here for like a full demo. I won't go through all of the sort of features and capabilities on it. Um, but, you know, suffice to say, what this pedal allows you to do um, is it takes your individual guitar note um, signal. And by the way, it's sort of when you're doing these harmonies, it only sort of works good when you're using a single note. So it's not great for chords. Um, but it'll take your note and then you've got a, a bunch of different settings on there that you can tell it to do, you know, many variations of a two-part harmony. Um, and there's even a couple settings where you have even three-part harmony on there, um, which sounds really, really wild. Um, but we're going to set the uh, pedal here to do a major third over your root note. Um, and um, uh, I'm going to have a link down in below of how you can pick one up um, if you're interested, basically it takes you, gives you the ability to take a note where you do that and you can do this. Right? So I just played. So you can see where this is going with Boston, right? So, all right. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, first, let's talk about our guitar tone in general. Um, for all of this. Um, so very, you know, very overdriven. Tom Schultz talks about playing through Marshalls and having a power attenuator on it. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to stack some overdrives and I'll have all the descriptions of all the gear I'm using here um, in the description below and what the settings are. But I've got two stacked overdrives going on um, and a signal boost. Um, and <clears throat> the other thing that this Harmonist pedal allows you to do is it actually allows you to split the signal. So um, you can take a signal mono running into it and you can come out of it stereo, um, which is what I'm doing here. Now you, you have to have two amplifiers to do that. To do that. I'm blessed enough to have two amplifiers here. Um, and, uh, but this allows you to split your signal and then you can you know, run through whatever other stereo pedals you have. I've got a chorus and a delay and reverb all that are stereo. It allows me to carry that stereo signal all the way through. Um, but it allows you to do left, right, you know, and when it does the harmonies, it sort of puts one on one side and one note on the other side, I think. Anyway, it sounds fa fantastic. Um, so for Boston, again, lots of overdrive. Um, I feel like there's some chorus on there, so I'm going to add some chorus. And why not put on a little, little bit of delay on there too. It's 
So that's the sound I'm going to go with anyway. Okay, so the intro of the song. Um, so we'll talk about the chords and all that foundation first, and then we'll go through all the solo sections. Um, so the very first intro um, sort of set of chords, right, um, on here is, of course, he plays it on acoustic, um, but it's a C sharp minor. I'll turn this down a little bit. Um, it's a C sharp minor, and I think he's playing power chords. I don't think he's playing the full, you know. I don't think he's getting the, the major and minor thirds in these, so I'm going to go with power chords, but it's a C sharp minor. You can see the shapes over my shoulder. A. E to B. And that quick little... So I watched Tom Schultz play it on video, and that's the positions that he uses. The other way I like to play this too, um, which is an alternate way to do it, um, is to do and do your E down here. Because it's, it's a it seems to be quicker for me to be able to do rather than either way is fine, right? Either way, right? So that's the main rhythm part going on. And um, so there's your first lead that comes in right after that, right? So, um, so the first, you know, lead during the intro section, it's all based on, and actually pretty much the whole song, all the soloing, is based on variations of an E major scale played in sort of different modes or hand, uh, you know, positions on here. Um, but this one is... <clears throat> Right here, I think he's playing it right here on the sort based on the fourth fret, based off of the C minor or C sharp minor scale shape, right? All the notes that we're going to be using are sort of in this space. They're all based off of that sort of E slash C sharp minor scale. So I watched how he plays it on the video, and he does slide up. There's a million ways to play all of these, by the way. Um, but I'm going to try and go through all the positions where I think it sets you up best for like the next thing that you're playing, right? Because um, I always sort of did it. You know, you can just do that with all in the same position. But it's interesting where he does his slide up. So let me go back to that again. And I understand why he slid up there, because you have that to do that a lot easier, right? Then the next part. He does a little slide up there. Which you could easily play. without doing the slide up. But again, from the videos that I show, that's where he's doing it. So I don't know if there's some kind of mojo in that. So he goes through around that twice. And then you end on this majestic E major. And this little riff off the E that he plays on the uh, to close out this intro section, it's very much based off of the sort of Keith Richards, you know, that sort of thing. So you start off with your E, and then you're going to just bar across at the ninth fret. Right, so um, I think all of them are the full Keith. I'll call this the full Keith. Right. 
Those are all full keys. Uh, and then I think that last, that one there is a half key. Where you, you don't do that. You just do that one. And that's how you close out that one. Right? So all together. So the verse chords are E, D, A, E. And you do that little lick after it. And then you do it again. B. got all those crazy pick slides that is not my strong suit but there's a pick slide in there goes back to the very first riff that we learned again again and then back to the top Right. And then it runs through another one of those verses. Um, and then at the end of it, it does a, uh, we go into the take a look ahead section is what comes off of this. And it's right before the guitar solo. So coming out of that second verse, you know, you go into this again. Okay, now here's the take a look ahead. Um, this is where Tom plays it, that I see him on video playing it anyway. Um, he's playing it, starts on the B uh, bar chord at seven. And he does single notes down here on two and four on the E string, and then an A power chord. And every time there's a chord here, it's a power chord, just a root fifth or a root fifth octave. C sharp, E, back to B. So it puts you right here, back to B again. All right, so that's that. Uh, that's how I see him playing it on video. Of course, you can play it many ways. that or all down here choose which way you want to go uh, but that's how he does it all right so now we're in our first part of the guitar solo or I guess the guitar solo before I go into this um, it's useful I think at least for me anyway it's useful to know how he's approaching this solo so he is again like I said he's basing all of this off of very much an E major scale. Um, and he's going to do, he's going to start it off with three little runs that are sort of call and response to one another. And it's going to slowly work its way up the neck. And the other thing that's going to have uh, uh, related to each other is, you know, everything in each run is going to be major, major scale. Um, but there's a bend that happens in every one of those three, which is a minor bend, um, which sort of, again, ties it all together. So everything in each of these three sections is major. And then there's a minor bend, um, which makes it a little more rock and roll um, sounding to my ear. But he does that consistently on all three of these. And then after that, he's going to go into his harmonizer and we'll use the harmonist um, for that part there. So, okay. So the first one that he plays on the solo is 
you're going to be down here um, on the lower end of the neck. And if you want to think about this, your, your E major scale is... Right? He's going to base it off of that sort of in this position. So, and the first note he's going to play is your G sharp. You're going to start on your G sharp and you're going to end on the G sharp. All right. But here's the beginning part, which is just a climb up to that spot. And now here's our first minor bend into the into the E note. So you're bending from that 7th fret G string D up to the E note. Right? <laughs> that was horrible. By the way, I'm not going to count off all the exact vibratos for you. Um, and um, But I'll link a video to another lesson on this song guy you've probably seen before, Shut Up and Play. Um, he does a great version of this, Peace of Mind, very much note for note too, and he he just really nails a lot of that specificity too, but I want to give him a shout out um, and link that here for him too. Anyway, let's go back to part one. We left off there our E note, we're gonna come back down. So the notes that run is all very major scale. And again, we're ending on that. G sharp. Let's do that at speed now. Just very quick pull offs at the end. And on the record, you'll notice they sort of overlay each other. So he's holding that note when the first note of the next one comes across, right? Um, it's just beautiful. Um, so the next one, and you can play this in many different in places. Um, and like I said, I'm going to. I'm going to suggest places where I think it sets you up nicely for a bend or where you're going the next spot. Um, a lot of guys will um, stay sort of in this position down there, but I'm going to come up here because the next notes are, you could start that here, but I'm going to put you up here. There's that minor bend again, right? Doing that slowly. And then our third one is all the way up here. If you picture this E, your D-shaped E up here. Um, we're going to be playing above that. That part of your E major scale, it's going to be right up there. But uh, that comes in. There's our minor bend. One more time. come all the way down here. The chord that's playing at this point is your turnaround chord. It's your B. That's what's the rhythm chord happening there. Um, and when he plays on lead here, it's just great. It's this chromatic climb up from four, five, six to seven. And what we're going to do here, we're going to close it out with a B major pentatonic bluesy bend thing. We've all heard this all heard versions of that lick, right? So we're gonna first do our chromatic climb. Do that little hammer on. 
And then we're going to come up to our tri uh, triumphant <laughs> sort of exit of this part of the solo. So we're sliding up here 13 and 12 on your third and second string. Then we're going to slide up again on your second and first string to 16 and 14. Right? So it's sort of like we're building a a B chord here because that's the chord that's being held. So to close that out, you're sliding up to, what is that, 16, 14, 16 on the first string, and then 17 on the first string and bend up to 19. You could also sort of do a version of uh, do that you know, gosh, off of. It's a little weird, but another easy way to play where it's all sort of in one position. But I'm going to go with that. And here's where it breaks off now, and we're going to go into our harmony. But let's play all those, see if I can play all those parts together now. All right, now we get to our harmonist. So again, harmonist PS6, I'll show the settings of what you want to have on here, but we're basically stacking on a major third. So whatever note, single note, you're going to put on here, it's going to add a major third onto it, all right? And actually, let me take the pedal off. I'm going to show you where you're playing, um, what you're actually playing, um, which is just going to be the lower part of the harmony. <laughs> Okay, we'll go through that more slowly, um, but let's add on the pedal now, play the exact same thing I just did. Whoops. God, that sounds so good. And then you're going to close it out with this big climactic um, climb off of an A chord, because that's where you ended. Those harmonies were off of an A chord. Ba -na -na -na. Those are the notes you're going to play. God, how epic is that? Wow. All right. Um, so on the tabs and everything that I've got for all my Patreon members, um, I'll actually have all of the individual harmonies broken out. So if you actually do have two guitars or if you want to play each one of those in a single note pattern, I have all those for you here. Um, but um, really, I think the benefit is just highlighting what the great stuff that this harmonist pedal can do, right? To do that. So awesome. Okay. So that closes out that section, goes back into another verse. Um, and when it closes out of that verse, um, we're going to have an outro section, which is also going to have a little harmony guitar solo on here. And right before you go into that, um, uh, the last sort of refrain of, you know, have my peace of mind. It does this. All right, just riffing off of the A, C sharp to B. 
Again, just power chords or, you know, three note power chord. Right? On that last one, you can just play your G string, pop on your harmonist. Sound epic and full. And then you know how it goes from there, right? It's just the intro again. And then it goes right back into the intro that we learned um, uh, at, the, at the top. And that's how they close out the song. And on the record, the way that, they, the way that he builds that harmony um, is he plays that first on the original sort of position. Does it again. And then he climbs up an octave and he's going to play the same thing. He's just playing the next octave up. Right. And then here, you can just pop on your harmonist do, and just stay in the exact same spot where you are there. There's also a low octave that goes on, um, like... So somebody is still doing underneath all of those, which makes it full, but I don't think I can get that with the harmonist pedal, but that alone will wow your audience. And it'll actually just wow yourself when you're just sitting in the room, even if you don't have it running out in stereo, if you just have it running out in mono, it's still epic. Um, but all right, so that, was Peace of Mind by Boston, and um, I hope you uh, learned something new. I want to say one more thing about this pedal, by the way. Um, super cool. Um, you have to make sure that you are in tune when you play with that. So make sure you have a tuner and you've tuned up right before you use that pedal because what that thing does is it detects exactly if you, you would set it at whatever key that you're in, like I'm in E for this right now. So you would set it for that key and whenever you play a note, you tell it E major or E minor. And if you're telling it E major, which I'm doing, um, it's gonna look for whatever note that you're playing, it's gonna look for the major third relative to the key of E major um, to put there. And what happens is if you're out of tune, if you're flat or sharp, it jumps around a little bit. It doesn't quite always find the right note. But if you're in tune, this thing is awesome. It's awesome and highly recommend it. Um, link down below if you want to pick one up. Um, like I said, it's Boston in a Box. All right. I hope you learned something new today. That was Peace of Mind by Boston. Um, let me know what you think in the comments and if there's another song you want me to do. And if you haven't done so already, Jump down and click subscribe if you like this and ring the bell because the bell lets you know every time I drop new content, which I do every single week. Okay, so until next week, take care, everybody.